Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Hey, everybody. As you hop on, say hello. Miss Judy is with us again this evening. We're going to finish up the Easy Peasy Double V, which she did a triple V for us, Tumblr. And, uh, yeah, so Miss Judy, the floor is yours. You can say hi. Hi, everybody. We're going to get started in a few minutes and finish up this beauty. So we'll see how it goes tonight. Make I sure think I about decided. Us. Yeah, I about decided on it to instead of using any of the colored stars and all I cut out, I'm just going to use silver. I think that really makes it pop. I put a little bit of the trim on one side, and we're going to do the other bees tonight. There we go. Put our stars on tonight. So we'll get started. Let's see if everybody can you see it in the group. Can you see it? That's what she's looking for now. Just making sure. It seems like yes, I can. she can see it. Yes. Can you click into it and make sure we can hear? Okay. Awesome. I couldn't find it the other night and I don't see it tonight. I can see you. Yep, yep. Cause we well, got good. Some, we got comments rolling through. Hi, Sequoia. All right, you're good to go, Miss Judy. Right. You can carry on as you are. All right. Okay, all right. Well, what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and turn you down. As you know, I always get the camera down, and uh, Cameron can let me know if it's working where you can see what I'm doing well enough. Uh, it looks great. I can't see any. You see it? Okay. It looks great. All right. You can see what we did, and I went ahead and put a coat of epoxy on it, and you can see where I did. I told you that I do the silver around the top, so I went ahead and sanded that, and we've got that where you can see just a little bit of silver. So what we're going to do tonight, where I put the silver on the V's here, we're going to put some on this part tonight. And that's what I've decided to do. I think the way the cup is, it will make it pop more just to use the silver, since we've got the silver for the 1776 and uh, our decal. We've got it, um, the silver. And then we're going to use the silver stars instead of the red and the blue stars. I think that's really going to make it look a little more elegant and make it pop a little bit more. There we go. So, Can you do me a favor? Well, Move it up just a tad, yeah. a little more towards you. The camera? Yes, ma'am. Or the cup? The, no, Is that the better? The camera. Move the camera just the a little bit more towards you. Okay. Is that better? You can tilt it a little back towards you. There you go. Perfect. Right there. Okay. Good. All right. Good, good. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. All right. Now, and uh, what I'm doing, instead of using the red, I've got this nail tape. The nail tape is tiny, tiny. And I get this at Sally's Beauty Supply. It's where I buy my nail tape. Really? You can order it online, but I get mine at Sally's Beauty Supply. So that's what we're going to start with tonight. And then I always seal it with just a little bit of polycrylic before I put the epoxy on it. Let me try to keep this down where you can see it. That's the problem I have with this little bitty tape. <laughs> it's keeping it where you can see it with the camera. I bet you can show us up close when you're done, right? I sure can. I Hi, Christy, sure can. Jilly, Herman. Welcome, welcome. Hey, everybody. Okay. And then, of course, you need a sharp X-Acto knife. As all of you know, if you're crafters, nothing worse than trying to cut something with one that's dull <laughs> and i'm going to get this pressed in and then i'm going to cut it <laughs> someone uh, said how do you keep your nails so pretty uh well i have uh gel nails and none of the things that we use the acetone or any of it bothers them so hmm. that's how i do it of course i've I had nails for years and years and years so i pretty much learned how to work with them and take care of them I'm trying to see which side's sticky miss judy don't let me catch you off guard with uh this air horn sound i'm about to make but herman requires me to do it every time he pops on and says hello uh so oh, okay hey you guys <laughs> 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 So he requires it's, it. Huh? It's always excessive. Oh no, he actually doesn't require it. He just he started doing it because I have uh -huh. brought up the air horn app 
one night and I hit it one time and from that point forward uh -huh. he just he just did the he keeps saying pew 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 in the comments and I know what he's saying. Yeah, so, you know what he wants. Oh absolutely. <laughs> hmm. It's like when you have a regular who's like, you know, if they get the same cup from you over and over like, Oh, you know what I want. Yep. This is correct. Hi Miss Jocelyn. Okay. You can see we've got the first V done. And then if any new ones come on, y'all can let them know where they can find how to make the easy peasy bees in our first part one. Yes, and if you did not catch the first part, um, I'm going to pop over to me real quick so you guys can see me. If you did not catch the first part, this video and all of the stuff that we've done up until this point is on YouTube. Um, it's under Interview a Crafter Episode 5, Judy Wilburn, Easy Peasy, Double, parentheses, Triple V, Tumblr. So you guys can find that on there and you can catch up to where we are now. And then if not, if you if you want to follow along, then you can pop back over to this one. Because this one will go up on YouTube as well for Part 2. And then you can follow right along and pick up where she's pick up. Pick up where she left off. Yeah, this is a pretty easy Tumblr to do. And it turns out really nice and you can do it in so many different ways. Like the one I showed you that was done in a camo look um, and make it look different. So that works well to make it many different styles. You made it look easy. I don't know if that means it is easy. <laughs> it is easy. Except working with this little bit of tape. <laughs> That's it a little more difficult. Want to lay that. Yeah, it has a mind of its own. You said you seal it with polycrylic. I do. I take a paintbrush and I'll run it around where I'm putting this down and then dry it with uh, the heat gun so that we can go ahead and do our epoxy tonight. But that just helps keep it from lifting because I find that anytime you're using uh, any of this nail tape or anything like that rather than vinyl uh, it tends to lift easy under your uh, epoxy yeah. so that helps keep it from lifting hmm. and any of the the foil seems to lift easier than the other so that's a that's a pro tip in other words right yes yep that's a pro tip <laughs> That's a pro tip to save you heartache. Now I'm going to go back and trim this right here. And get that up. Out of our way. Maybe not. See, it's got a mind of its own. And you're doing a live. Oh, of course. There we go. Okay, so now we've got two done. We'll get this last one done, then we're going to put our decal on, and then we'll put stars on. I was trying to look to see how far away you are from us. You're about five hours away. Yeah. Yeah, it's about five hours. I was about to say, if we could get you over here to do some tumblers with us and get my cameras and stuff on them, people could see everything Ooh, up close. I know it. That'd be fun. Oh, yeah. Get to go on a vacation, too, and my husband pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we get to where we're doing well well enough off we might just pay for it oh my goodness <laughs> i wouldn't want you to do that that's well, a little bit much Hey, that we we plan on having this craft Maybe. room in here all set up with we got a new ac unit we're, about, we're in the process of trying to put in now so it'll be all air controlled and nice and neat we're eventually going to turn our uh well we have a shop in the back of our property here that's got like it's like a 20 by 20 and yeah. we're going to turn it into an airbnb and let people stay oh, okay. there from time to time so maybe by the well, time we get to where we're going we can we can have you come over and we'll just y'all have use. all of this figured out hey we we got plans we're just getting it, right. getting it there is what is what the biggest part is well that's the first steps making the plan <laughs> say what yeah. Heather's got to make, <laughs> yeah, make a lot of cups to pay for that. Oh, yeah. I know how that goes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Now, the other night, I got to thinking when I told you that I try to do about 12 cups a month. 
I try to do about 12 for customers, plus the ones I do when I'm doing a live. Uh, plus, I try to keep ready to sell tumblers that I'm working on all the time. Okay. So, so you do a, so a lot I more stay, than 12. Yeah, I stay busy, busy. Busy, busy. Busy, busy. And I love it. This is something I said I wish I had a learned to do a long time ago, but I didn't know about it a long time ago. But but you found it, and it's your new I passion. found it through my son, and then now it's something that I just dearly love. Okay, now we've got that one done. And you are good at it, Miss Judy. So this we'll, side we'll and it, something yeah. that I did go back and do, you know how when you do your inks, they sort of mull together and make weird colors. After I got through with my epoxy, I did go back with some of the red ink and I just dabbed it on there so it would look more red rather than that mold up color. Really good so, far. so to give it a little bit more red. So now what I'm gonna do is, uh, now we're gonna put the decal on. It says, may we never forget freedom is not free. Like and the then I've got the star. So that's what we're gonna do now, so. That silver outline looks if, good too. Yeah, it makes it pop. That's why I thought we would use silver stars rather than uh, the colored ones since we've got a lot of red and blue on here anyway. So. Good idea. Nah. This foil is, of course, it's got a mind of its own too when you're working with it. And I did go in and sort of take my release tape and brush it up against my pants legs so that it wouldn't be quite as sticky and sense. this I'm just gonna sort of eyeball it and try to get it where we want it okay now and where I'm pressing I'm just pressing on the foil Then when I pull my tape off, I try to hold it close to my cuff and it helps keep from lifting any of our decal off. Okay. So now we've got that and now we're going to put our colored stars on. Pull them off. Thank you again for doing this, Miss Judy. All right. Well, I appreciate the opportunity of you letting me do it and you sharing your time with me. Anytime. Anytime at all. Like I said, we could always do another one where if you had something else that you wanted to do and me read the comments for you, I don't mind. Yeah, that'd be good. We might want to try the fabric one that we talked about. That would be fun. Yeah, absolutely. We'll uh, do some, uh, there's polls some people... in the group. See what people say. Yeah. There's some people that are doing them with the, the fabric, I mean, with the polyacrylic, and some that aren't. So um, once you do it with the polyacrylic, usually you never look back. <laughs> it makes it so much easier. Now might, we're just going to put some random stars. So you might change Heather's mind on doing fabric tumblers because she says she enjoys it, but... Like, it's basically what you're saying, that she hates having to put so many layers of Mod Podge. Oh, yeah, I did, too. And that's one reason I've used that Crystal Act before, and I like it. It makes a beautiful cup. But I just don't have the patience to put a coat on, wait four hours, put a coat on, wait four hours. Right. That kind of thing. So, um, and the cups that I've done with it turned out really pretty. And I still use it you know for some things that i do uh anything that i wanted that i wanted the um matte look and then rick introduced us to the matte look using the um barkeeper's friend the liquid and so it's so much easier too because you don't have to put the coats on and let it dry hmm. you just sand it and let it go so that makes that part much easier too i'm sure so, I should have already had these stars cut out. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. We have all night. 
<laughs> we got time to do it, huh? That's right. No rush. Yeah, I think the silver is looking pretty because in it is. with the ones that are hollow, then you can see the different colors coming through. So that's going to work out good, I think. And I, I think so the way I did them, I got several shapes for us to do. It's all the same stars. I just made them bigger and then pulled the middles out or left the edges and that kind of thing. So, Hi, everybody see. who's hopping on. Say hello. Hello, hello, hello. I did go in and remind everybody in the other group that we were going to be on for them to try to view it with us. Oh, yeah, good. Thank you. The more the merrier. That's right, absolutely. And for those of you that are hopping on, uh, this is the part two to the triple double V tumbler that Miss Judy started with us on Wednesday. Um, we were just talking about us possibly having her come back on and do a fabric tumbler with us down the road. And so we're excited, very excited. And right now you're just putting stars on it, right? That's right, I'm just putting stars on it. And like I said, all of these came from one star, but when I weeded them, I just did it different and saved all the parts, even though they look different and different sizes. So that's one good thing, not having to pull out a bunch of different ones. I'm sure. And I'm not going to put but just a few more on there, and then we'll have this part done. Okay. Corey, I'm not working on anything this evening. I'm uh, I'm just here for Miss Judy. I bet Heather's working. She she's over there working on her craft table yeah that's what i mean that's why i said i bet she's working <laughs> she's working she's behind the scenes working over here yeah okay i think that's probably all that i'm gonna put on i think that's enough and then now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go in with uh, my polycrylic and we're gonna seal these and then we're going to put our epoxy on it and that way y'all can see how i do my epoxy i'm gonna go ahead and tape up the bottom um i always tape the top uh, on most of my cups and the bottom on most of my cups except a lot of the designs i do i don't always tape the top but i try to always tape off the bottom simply because as i said in part one if a customer drops their tumbler, most of the time it's going to hit on that bottom edge and that's where it will crack and chip and and then nobody knows how it happened. <laughs> or they won't they won't tell you it happened. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> something happened to my tumbler and I need it fixed. Right. I don't know what happened. I don't know what I don't it, <laughs> Then you ask them, did it get dropped? No, no, no. I would never drop it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, now we got that done. And let me get a little thing to put my polycrylic in. And when I do my polycrylic, I don't shake it. I just sort of dunk it, is what I call it, back and forth. And I always put it in just a, a condiment bottle so that it makes it easier. And then that way I've got a lid I can put on it to keep it fresh. Now I'm just going to take my brush and put it in there and then I'm just going to brush down all of this oil that we put on. I think you can see maybe what I'm doing. And it dries clear so we don't have to worry about it showing. Do you still have the first tumbler you ever made, Miss Judy? 
No, I don't. Uh, first one I ever made, I made for my daughter-in-law. So, but she now still I've got, it? she does. She still uses it all the time. So you could get it if you needed to. I could, it's very simple. <laughs> it's just, uh, I just put the decal on the stainless steel tumbler and then painted it, then pulled the decal off and then epoxied it. So it was a real simple, easy tumbler to start out with, but it looks really pretty still. Good. And I kept one of the first fabric tumblers that I made because it has um, well, a couple of them because it has the reasons that we do what we do when we make one. Um, one of them has rust spots on it. Hmm. And um, the only reason I can say that it had the rust spots is because at that time, I did not prep my cup. At that time, I didn't know the importance of prepping a cup. So I just put the fabric over the stainless steel and then it had some spots come up that looked like little rust spots under the fabric. And I've still got that one. Gotcha. And then I've got one that um, they say those little milky spots that come up because it gets moisture under it because it's been washed or the seals broke or right. that kind of thing. This one has never been used. It's never been wet. Still has the milky spot that come up hmm. on it. And the only reason I can determine that happened is because the Mod Podge was not completely dry. Gotcha. Uh, when you put so many coats of Mod Podge, it's got to dry a long time because once you put that on there, it's water-based and epoxy does not like water. So if it's not completely dry, and that one, it took it about, I'm gonna say three months. And then just all of a sudden, those milky spots came up on it. Wow, and polycrylic, so, you, no, no, no troubles with that. Right. And then two, uh, I've learned to always prep and paint them. Because if you've got a fabric that has some white in the design on the fabric, if you don't, then that um, white is not going to show a really true white. That silver is going to distort the white once you get Good it on advice. there. So that's another lesson learned. So that's the three main things. And then when I found doing them with polycrylic, oh man, what a difference it made. Total game changer. Total game changer. A lot faster and a lot prettier. And uh, I think they just look much better. To Heather, me. Heather uses a product called Quick Coat to do a lot of sealing yeah. for her tumblers and whatnot. Like in between layers, we'll say. Like if she do, if she has a, like vinyl or something that she wants to make sure it's got a nice bond to epoxy afterwards, she'll use Quick Coat for hers. Yeah, and that's a good thing to use. It's a lot of uh, polycrylic. Uh, I got some, uh, somebody sent me a little sample bottle of quick coat. Uh, I got with some tumblers. I think it was uh, where I buy my tumblers at uh, Southern Palmetto stainless steel tumblers. And uh, I've got to use, I should have used it tonight. And then that way I could have been a plug for that, but I didn't, sorry. <laughs> but better late than never. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this and I've got that on there on all the spots. So I'm gonna dry it a little bit with our heat gun. And I've turned the heat. My heat gun has seven settings on it to make it hot or cool. So I've turned it back on hot so it'll dry it faster. Sorry for the racket. No, actually you can't hear it, it drowns it out. Oh, well, good. Good, good, good. Just hear me talking. That's right. Uh, yes, Gia, from what she said, the polycrylic only is going to go on the vinyl seams and the nail tape that she used. Fact, it just Catherine. seals it and helps keep it from lifting when you start putting your epoxy on it. And you're just hitting it kind of with bursts of heat and rotating it as you're going so that way you don't get one spot too hot, right? Yep. 
I am. And now I'm going to turn it back down on cool and put it on a little bit more. And then we'll let it set while we mix our epoxy. Someone else asked where you live, Miss Judy. Oh, did we lose you? Did we lose you, Miss Judy? Are you still there? I think we might have lost her. Oh, nope, there she is. Uh, doing it. Doing it. You see me? I can see you now. Yeah, you, we lost you for a second. Oh, okay. Well, I'm using a um, tablespoon of A and a tablespoon of B because this is a 30 ounce tumbler. So that's the reason I'll be using all uh, the tablespoons. And get my little stir stick. And I stir the ones that I do with tablespoon for around four minutes and the ones where I do smaller for three minutes. And then as we went over the other night, using my eighth of a teaspoon of A and B to do the epoxy method for glitter, I stir it about two to two and a half minutes. And I use, uh, I've always used the uh, Illumilite Amazing Clear Cast. It's all I've ever used and I use their quick set epoxy and it is wonderful. Yeah. But that's all I've ever used. <laughs> she froze again on us. One second. One second. She'll be back. But yeah, she's from Georgia, Snooks. Uh, and that's why she's got the lovely Georgia accent. I don't like anything. There she goes. The regular formula. We keep losing you from time to time. You froze there oh, for a minute. I... Okay, well, at least we're... I don't know why. It's okay. It's not your fault. We, uh, but I, I'm keeping people entertained while you're gone, so you're good. All you're doing we'll is do mixing it, epoxy. So. Yep, that's all I'm doing is mixing epoxy. So, But I'll, I'll be using a little bit of the Casting Craft transparent blue dye, and that keeps it from yellowing. And two other boo-boos I have. I made a uh, mother and daughter cup, and the top part of it's white and the bottom's black with polka dots. Hmm. So we may guess what that is. But in using that, uh, at that time, I did not know about the secret of the uh, crafting cap, uh, craft transparent dye. And you use not even a drop. You can see how much I put in there. Mm -hmm. And it stops the yellowing. Those yellowed in about, oh gosh, I'm going to say two months. And they were never in the sun. So, wow, that's funky. It did yellow really bad. But, so, um, someone had a question. Uh, Snoops, okay. I, I live in Savannah, or in the Savannah area, Heather and I do. Um, someone asked if we, you could talk a little more about the fabric tumblers with doing the polycrylic. Is it only one coat over the fabric? or? Yes. It is. What I do, I, I cut my fabric to almost fit the tumbler before I ever start working with it on the tumbler. And um, like I said, I don't do a straight seam. I go in and do my seam. Uh, I call it a jagged seam. I try to cut around the different design on the tumbler. So once it overlaps, it's going to blend a little bit better. Right. But once I cut my fabric, then I lay it down and I spray it with 2X clear gloss by Rust-Oleum. Okay. And just do a light coat of that. And that helps keep it from fraying around the edges. And then when I put it on my cup, then all I do is put the polycrylic on my cup, just like you would the Mod Podge and apply it basically the same way. Um, put the polycrylic on, rub it down, put some more on, rub it down, and then put a coat on once you get it all on there. And then once it dries, it's done. Hmm. So then all you got to do is just trim your edges at the top and the bottom. And uh, you don't have to wait and do all those coats and go back and let it dry overnight and hours and 
the ones that I did before, I always let them dry overnight with each coat because after you have one that gets that milky look for no reason, then you got to realize it's got to be that Mod Podge not dry under it, right. especially if it's never touched water. It's never been, you know, where it could get moisture in any way. So, yeah, that's, that's fascinating. That's, I didn't know that you could do that with polycrylic. I, I still think that's a really yeah. good tip. I'll be yeah. fascinated to see how when you actually do one for us, you know, so we yeah. can kind of get an idea of it. Uh, okay. Snook said that she wanted to spend a week with you learning. Well, tell her, come on. <laughs> I forget where she's from. Snook's, where are you from? Yeah, you hear the invitation. Uh, Misty asked where you got the blue, uh, the transparent dye from. Oh, uh, you! I get mine at Hobby Lobby. You can get it in the polymer clay section or you can get it in the model car section. The model car section. Mm -hmm. or the polymer clay section or the polymer clay section mm -hmm. it all depends on what your Hobby Lobby has and where it's at yeah well the Hobby Lobby it's in the it's easy to find if you go in the polymer clay selection Snook says she lives in North Carolina and Misty North Carolina, it's, it's called a transparent dye yeah it's casting craft transparent dye here is um that's a little label on it. It's um, casting craft transparent dye, but it's blue where this one was white, and it lasts a long, long, long time. And if I'm putting glitter on, I don't use it until my top coat. I don't waste it on. If I'm putting epoxy method and doing glitter. Uh, I just put it on anything that's going to be my top coat. Gotcha. That's why it lasts That's you so long, because you only put it on the top coat. Yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't take a lot. Sometimes less is better. Less is more. Than more. Okay, this has got about a few more seconds. And we'll have it done. Yeah, Snooks, she and I talk back and forth a lot on the computer when we're doing when I'm doing well not while I'm doing a live but after I do a live I go right. back and we correspond you that way your, you got your uh, your loyal followers that's right and, and I love it, love it oh so, so we, yeah. we feel the same way we have our our tried and trues and the ones that are almost always on every single live and we can't thank them enough you know for being loyal to it and I know it's it. always here we we appreciate it because it makes life easier. Okay. Now, and of course, I always, I've seen a lot of people that when they do tumblers, if they're doing a wine glass or something like that, they'll leave the football sticking out like this on a smaller tumbler. But I, I either cut mine or fix it somewhere I can push them all the way in so that I don't have to worry about epoxy getting on there because if it does, then it's going to mess up your top rim most every time no oh, yeah so i've learned that lesson too I don't how many let it how many cup turners do you own 10. you own 10. Uh -huh. are they all single like this one or are they no i've got a six cup turner and then i've got four of the singles i got you and this one came from rick the one that i work on all the time doing my lives that and was the nice other, I bought one, uh, and then we made two from uh, Barbecue Grill Motors. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I'm in the process of, uh, I'm about to redo all of Heather's, probably between tonight and this weekend. So I would love to have the kind that have the magnets where you just push them on and pop them off, uh, simply because of the ease of dealing with them rather than having to... Uh, the way I want to set mine up with my six cup turner, it's probably, I'm going to say 30 inches deep. And then it's uh, got three on the top, uh, three on the bottom and they're mm -hmm. staggered. And uh, it works good. I've had it for years and never replaced the motor or anything on it. But it's hard for me to reach across to get to undo my cups without sense. getting my arm in them or something like that. <laughs> So I think the other kind would probably work better for that reason. So and you, I'm sure you don't have a single piece of clothing that's got epoxy on it, right? 
that's why I started wearing aprons all the time. <laughs> About everything I've got, Scott, it pops in. <laughs> I will used to, uh, after church, I would run downstairs and uh, get a cup turning and, you know, not take time to put an apron on. So most of my dress slacks have epoxy on them for that reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, okay. Now we're going to start putting our epoxy on. And you saw how I mix it, Moy. Do I stir it? I was about to say, you. that's probably the reason why you haven't had uh, any issues if you have is because Heather's very impatient when it comes to mixing her epoxy. She mixes it quick and she mixes it for a short amount of time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, uh, huh? I always put a timer on okay. mine when I do it. She makes it, she makes hers for four minutes. Just now. For thirty ounce and three minutes for a twenty ounce. Three minutes for twenty ounce and four minutes for thirty. <laughs> Heather said that uh, she would she would quit halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it works for her, that's great. <laughs> hey, it, it, everybody's different. She just she hits that's hers right. with a with a good torch and <laughs> gets the uh, gets the bubbles out that way and leaves it be. But she doesn't have yep. too many issues with hers either, as far as yeah. you know, fish eyes or having any issues. So that's always good. Well, I found I work my studio's in the basement, so it's pretty consistent between sixty-eight and seventy-two year round. But right. I found that the epoxy really likes it around seventy-two. Yeah. And I don't know if y'all can hear that in the background, but that's fireworks being set off. Yeah. We've already had them here in our neighborhood, too. And then once I get a good coat of epoxy on there, then I just, what I call drizzle up and down as it turns. Let it turn. And then I always keep a little bit left in my cup because I found if I do get fish eyes, I can take my popsicle stick or my stir stick and drop just a little drop on each fish eye and it most of the time they'll go away hmm. and I don't have to do anything else to them so now we're going to hit it with a heat gun um, the torch keep it moving when you're using a torch folks Good tip. Oh, no know to do that. Okay, and then I remove my tape right away. That's something that a lot don't do. But I have good clean edges around my bottoms and tops too. When I actually do the top, I go back in with a baby wipe and where the tape overlapped, oh, there's always a little line that you have to go back in and clean up. So now let's set this over out of the way and then we'll let it turn just a little bit more and I'll hit it again with our uh, torch after the bubbles have time to come up to the top just a little bit. You'll notice when you use the foil decals, bubbles show on that foil a lot more than they do on anything else. And that's the reason you have to wait a little bit and let them come to the top. Now, as far as looking at this tumbler right now, I really don't see any other than on the fall, it looks like there's some. So we'll let it turn just a little bit for that and then we'll be through with this. It'll dry and then um, after it sets, it'll be ready to go see Heather. <laughs> She's excited for it, I promise you. I was, I was showing her, because she was in the middle of doing a couple different things when we were doing the first part. And I showed uh -huh. her, she's like, oh, I'm excited. That's cute. So she's excited about it. But it, um, I think it turned out pretty. I think so, too. Now yes. everybody's talking about how many tumblers, how many turners they have. Are they? <laughs> yeah. Well, I started out with one. And uh, I ordered one, and then we built two, and then I waited probably seven months 
or so after I started working here at home. And then I ordered uh, my six cup turner and I've had it probably for three years. Okay. Can you see it? Yes, ma'am. Fantastic job. Right. It looks incredible. All right. And it's an easy tumbler to do if anybody wants to do one. They you can saw go back and watch yeah. March 2. You saw all of it right here. And it's all going to be on YouTube. It'll be there, will be a part one and a part two. And you, if you want to go back and rewatch it, you're more than welcome to. All right. Well, okay. Well, I think that's about it. So it didn't take long to do part two no. and get it over with. So when you're ready to see a fabric tumbler, you just let me know and we'll schedule that. We will do Get it. her done. Miss Judy, right. thank you again for staying okay. with us well, this thanks evening. Thanks, everybody, for watching. You have a good night, okay? Happy 4th of July. Y'all, too. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. You too. Bye. All right. We concluded this one. So it was nice, quick, to the point. I do love that about Miss Judy. It seems like she gets in. Herman said this last time this live went through. Uh, she gets in. She does what she's got to do. She pops out, and she mic drops, and it's done. So uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Again, we really appreciate it. Heather and I both love the support that you guys give us on a regular basis. Um, don't hesitate to continue to reach out if you guys want to see more stuff like this, if you have more things that you want to see, if there's other teachers that you want to see, other crafters that you want to see, shoot them to me. We'll try to get it together. I know uh, Miss Jennifer Welch Green with Thirsty Turtle Tumblers is going to be one of the next ones that we do an interview with. Um, I think we had one that was going to be a top maker or a 3D molder of some sort. Maybe we're going to have pop on. Um, as well as uh, we still got to get Miss April Nolner in here, get her to do hers. And maybe we can get Miss Tavoli to do one as well. That'd be fun. I love Tavoli. So, uh, but yeah, thank you She's guys very much. <laughs> Heather's Tavoli, sorry. Uh, but we love you guys really genuinely. Thank you so much for being here. If you guys have any questions, reach out to us. Uh, leave a comment here. Otherwise, we will see you guys on the next one. And we hope you have a wonderful evening. And if we don't see you, have a happy 4th of July. Okay. All right. You can got to go home. But you can't stay here. Okay, bye.